Our trip to Detroit was surprisingly successful given the weather situation at the time. Detroit was seeing about a foot of snow. It was extremely cold, it was very windy, so the trip there was pretty treacherous. The 2014 winter record-breaking cold vortex. I've known people in energy management in these different industries and at these different companies for about 10 years through my involvement in the EPA Energy Star program and my research for that. When the Bass Connections concept was launched by Duke, it seemed very natural to me to reach out to some of my colleagues in industry to see if they'd be willing to mentor a student team for a real world experience in uh, energy management and energy issues. One of the things that I thought would be very valuable to the students is to be able to go, actually go to a manufacturing plant. They were meeting at the Global Facilities offices, which are located at GM's Warren Tech Center. Jeffrey Johnson is our GM company mentor, sort of the liaison between GM and the students here at Duke. His job has been to develop a much deeper understanding of the energy use in these processes and to try to redesign these processes to be more energy efficient. Over the last semester, all the teams have had a lot of interactions with their company mentors. Ultimately then, the plant visits, they get to meet people in person. Yeah. Hi, my name is Kunya Yu. I am currently a sophomore in Pratt Engineering at Duke. Well, it's good to have you on the team. That's exactly what I need is a mechanical engineer. My name is Kunyao Yu. This is my second semester participating on the Bass Connections project. The Duke students on the Bass Energy team are going to be working with me to further develop a model of energy use in paint shops. I'm Jingwei Deng. I am a junior mechanical engineer major. Our main role as a group is to focus on the energy efficiencies in the General Motors paint plant. With the use of psychrometric charts and data provided by GM, we will seek to bridge the gap between a physical model and a statistical description. One of the challenges that they face is you know, this psychometrics issue of, of how much energy it takes to heat, cool, and humidify the air. And a detailed model of that will give them a much uh, better tool for understanding the energy efficiency and the variability of energy uh, in that process. We're going to visit the Lake Orion assembly plant, which is where we build Chevrolet Sonics and Buick Veranos. We're going straight out to Orion in the morning. Okay, well, shut down now, but Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't see any shutdown notices on. It was interesting the first day we got there, and even the second day, the plant was kind of running on a low level of operation, and even the offices too. As we're heading to the plant, we've been hearing about how there had been snow a couple days before. They were just starting up the plant again from the holiday break. So we weren't very sure if the plant would be up and running at full capacity. Started out in the paint shop. And that's where we met Eve, who is a floor manager in the paint shop. And we wore our blue jumpsuits. I think he said they call them like their Smurf suits. Before we went into the paint booth, Eve made us put on these full blue polyester suits and hairnets. Just apply yourself. <laughs> Painting is like a very perfect process, ideally. Yeah, yeah it feels like Bring we're about to White. do some giant science experiment or something. <laughs> So when you think of a paint shop, you think of cars coming through, you have like paint brushes, you have workers painting them one by one. I didn't realize how many different aspects of engineering actually went into the paint shops. And even with the bad weather and a whole lot of the people that are supposed to be working there not being there, the number of cars that were flying over your head or going past you on conveyors was sort of overwhelming. That was the first time I saw an assembly line. I think that was, that really stood out to me. In the history books and in engineering, you hear about assembly lines, and then you actually go and see one is, is two, different, uh, two different things. 
I was really excited to finally be inside of a paint shop because this is what we've been focusing on and will continue to focus on all throughout the semester. This is a plant that was originally built in the early 1980s. The Oregon Assembly was closed down due to a lack of product for the plant. So when General Motors was reborn at the height of the automotive crisis, a decision was made to refit and modernize Orion. Manufacturing systems for automobiles, particularly paint shops, are very expensive. It may cost a little bit more to be clean, but a lot of the things that we do to reduce energy and to reduce solvent emissions also actually tend to reduce the capital cost of the entire system. They kind of walked us through the entire process, which they call their three wet paint process. You have a little pit or a little piece of dirt, if you put paint over it, instead of getting smaller, it gets bigger. Yeah, it just amplifies it. I think the robots are one of the things that make a big impression on you when you walk through that plant. It's just not something that you see every day are these gigantic industrial robots and I think he mentioned that some of them that they were using to move the cars during the paint process were the biggest industrial robots in the world. So that was very cool and obviously as an engineer that's something that you can look at and realize how much goes into that. See the robot applied like this sealer here? Rob robot applied it? A lot of places, but then in the areas that is uh, that are exposed, it needs to be smoothed out. So the operators do that. We have visitors. Thank you, sir. A group of students from Duke University. I think it was a great starting point to have that experience of just jumping right in, being actually in the plant, and getting that hands-on experience and information from people who are industry veterans and whatever feel they're working in, which is kind of different and that's not an opportunity you get all the time. I'm hoping that everything we went over in the Tech Center in Detroit, our goals, our database that we want to develop, the charts, the equations, it's going to be a lot of work and it's going to require you know, a lot, a lot of teamwork, a lot of thinking outside the box, learning things that we probably haven't covered in class. But I think it's a really good experience that, and that's part of the point, you can't get it in the classroom. I was really interested in thermodynamics to begin with, but I had no idea how to apply the concepts that I learned in class to the real life engineering problem. Especially as a senior, it's cool to build sort of a wide web of, of just contacts across industries and across different companies. And it's sort of a bridge between the classroom and office where you are working with people of different ages, of different backgrounds. Seeing things as data and in, and in books is very different from the visceral experience of being in a place that you're trying to understand and study.